Hi, my name is Timothy Johnson, and this is my final reflection for personal stewardship uh, for this semester. Um, so starting off, for the last eight weeks, we have been talking about what does stewardship mean to us? What is personal stewardship? And I think personal stewardship really comes down to two things, both of them outlined in the book of Genesis. Number one, when we were first created, God said he made man in his own image and he gave us dominion over the earth. And so th by that statement alone right there, it's showing that God gave us dominion and authority over this earth. Why? Because it was his gift to us, which means that we have to take care of it. So I think the first the first part of being a steward of anything is you have to take care of it. And the second part to being a steward is not just taking care of it, but taking full advantage of the gift that you've been given and using it and maximizing its potential, using it to the best of your ability. And I think that was uh, that was outlined when he said, be fruitful and multiply. And, G and, uh, and, and the Bible also says that God gave them the task of naming the animals and he sat back to watch what they would name them. So God, we weren't just given free will just because he wanted to give us free will. He wanted to give us free will because free will is the only way that we can operate in creativity and curiosity. And so just like any other parent, if you give a child a gift, you don't want them to destroy the gift. However, you also don't just want to let, you just don't want it to sit there and then not use it. So I think personal stewardship is not just taking care of something but it's also maximizing its potential. And so I think going into each subject matter of personal stewardship, uh, first off looking at creation, how can we take care of it, but also take full advantage of it? I think we have been way far on the right on that. We've taken full advantage of it. We've used it. We've, we've really maximized its potential, but we haven't done a great job of taking care of it. And I think one of, the th one of the biggest problems that the world is having right now is that the church that should be the, the biggest voice as far as taking care of the earth and being great stewards has kind of stepped away from the area of climate change and environmental health because it's, be it's become this mindset of isolationism. Hey, Jesus is coming back soon. This is probably a sign of the end time, so we're just not going to worry about it. And that's not necessarily true. God is sovereign over the earth, but he's not in control. He set the earth in motion and he left us to take care of him. And so I really love that that video that we watched by Bill Nye, the science guy, where it's saying that, hey, what you do every day does have an impact. You can't just pretend like the life that you're living is not affecting other people around you. As a steward, you have to understand that your life does affect other people. And so I think that 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 can't be seen any better than in creation and um, that we have to learn to take care of our environment and do the things necessary to be stewards of the world. And if and if, if no one else does it, Christians should be at the forefront of it because we know the God of the universe who created it. We know the God of the universe who created it and we know he gave it to us as a gift. So we should we should steward it well as far as wellness is concerned. God wanted us to live lively lives. He wanted us to thrive. He wanted us to be able to enjoy our children and um, enjoy our dreams. But you cannot do that if you're sickly all the time, if you're overweight, or if you're depressed all the time because of chemical imbalances, because of the things that you're eating. No, no, no. We were meant to be healthy. We were meant to be thriving, healthy human beings. And if we want to represent Jesus in the best way possible, we've got to do it from a physical side of us as well. We are body, soul, and spirit. And just because you're taking care of your mental part and your spiritual part, but if you're not taking care of your body, then it won't do you any good because you won't be able to move and you won't be able to get around. We've got to take care of ourselves so that, as I said before, we can enjoy our families but we so that we can also be good witnesses to people about Jesus. No one's going to listen. No one's going to look at someone who's obese and overweight and depressed all the time and different with all different kinds of diseases and look at them as a testament to the goodness of God. No, they're not going to do that. They're going to look at fully healthy, functioning human beings and say, man, I want to be like I want to be like that. And so that's something that as believers, I believe that we should strive for. Also in the area of civic, um, I loved when uh, Pastor Mayo came in and he talked about civic responsibility and understanding what's going on in your education system. I think that is one of the one, that is one of the areas 
where I think we we haven't really done much of anything. We're not really taking good care of it because in and in, in, in maybe and in maybe you know not voting right people in, not being as involved as we sh as we should. We're also not maximizing our potential because we don't understand how it works. Most I'm not saying that people have to be involved in politics, but people do need to educate themselves about. You don't have to educate yourself about world politics, but hey, what's going on in your municipality? What's going on in your district? What's affecting your schools? What's your mayor's initiative? What's your city councilman's initiative? Heck, what's your governor? What's your governor's initiative? What's going on in your area that's from a civic standpoint that you can help change your environment? Because the, at the church, it's supposed to help transform cities. As Christians, we are the light of the world. But we cannot be a light in darkness if we don't know where the darkness is, if we're always trying to isolate ourselves and keep ourselves away from it. So we have to be civically minded so that we actually understand the problems that people are facing and so that we can go there and help them fix it. And finally, finance. Um, I think one of the big, uh, we, we, people take that scripture that says the love of money is the root of all evil and they run with it and they say money is bad and money is terrible. No, I think money is a kingdom resource that Jesus knew could be flipped to the, could be flipped wrong and used against us, but he knew that if we knew how to use it right, we would be very formidable. And I think money is one of the greatest kingdom resources that we have because we don't all share the same dreams. We don't all share the same ideals. We don't all share the same drives. However, we all have passions, we all have dreams, we all have drives. And by investing in other people, hey, I'm so going back to go back to creation, I might not be all that passionate about the environment, but there's an NGO or a nonprofit out there that is. And so I can invest my money in them and then I can see that grow. Same thing with the church. The church is the, the local church is the hope of the world, right? I want to see the local church grow. I can invest my money in that. I can invest my money in missions, even though I can't be a missionary. Your money is a resource that you can use to invest in other people's dreams and other people's adventures to help to, to help to help God spread around the world. But you cannot do that if you're financially not in a good place. So that's why I really love the Dave Ramsey curriculum, because it's all about not just getting out of debt, but building wealth so that you can use that wealth to help other people. Because that's really the goal of anyone. We're not just accumulating wealth just for the fact of accumulating wealth. We're using we're we're accumulating a wealth so that we can build a legacy that can change the lives of those around us. This has been an amazing class. I am so honored to have been in this class. Dr. Casey, you are amazing. Um, thank you so much for teaching us, and I'll see you next time.